Hey everyone, what's up? It's Rob Dodson here. And uh, in this video today, I'm gonna show you how to use the Yeoman generator for Polymer. Now, if you go to the uh, GitHub website and you go to uh, github.com slash yeoman slash generator Polymer, it's gonna take you to this page right here. Uh, lots of really cool stuff on this page, lots of instructions, all sorts of neat little sub generators and everything. We've got uh, features that are included in the generator, including support for SAS and auto prefixer and PageSpeed Insights, Mocha test, lots of really cool stuff. What I want you to do is to scroll down until you find this installation section. And then there's a command here that you gotta run to get set up with the generator. Now I'm assuming that you've already got Yeoman installed. And so to install the generator, uh, you're just gonna run npm install dash g generator polymer. That's going to go and fetch all the dependencies for the, the generator so you can actually start running it and scaffolding out your projects. If you get some errors that say like you don't have permission to globally install stuff, you may need to run this command with sudo. So you might have to type sudo npm install dash g generator polymer. But I'm gonna assume that, that you, you got the thing installed, everything's up and running and, and working for you. And so over in my terminal, I'm going to just create a little Polymer project and walk you through this. So I'm gonna type uh, make directory poly dash project cd into that directory and then we're gonna run yo polymer. And when we do that, it's gonna ask us a few questions. The first thing it's gonna to wanna to know is if we wanna include core elements. Now, if you're not sure what core elements are, if you go to the Polymer website at polymer-project.org, you click on this element tabs up here, uh, it'll take you to this page and we've got two element sets that we talk about here. The first are the core elements. So you can click this image and it'll actually open a little sandbox and you can play around with some of the core elements. Uh, these are structural elements, so they, they tend to not be like super stylized, but it's a lot of um, scaffolding for your application. So things like header panels, uh, drop downs, uh, icons, icon buttons, you know, a lot, of, uh, a lot of functionality that you might want when you're, you're just sort of putting the skeleton of your application together. Uh, so in my terminal, I'm just going to go ahead and hit enter and say yes, I would like to include the core elements. And that's going to ask if I want to include paper elements. So again, on that uh, same element collection page, we've got another sampler for the paper elements. Click on that. Uh, you'll see here that you can browse around and check these out. Uh, they tend to be more stylized than the core elements, and oftentimes the paper elements have a lot more to do with user interaction. So uh, checkboxes that the users are going to be clicking on or tapping on that have pretty stylized animations. So lots of really cool stuff there. Uh, in, my, in my terminal, I'm going to hit enter and say yes again. By the way, if you're curious about um, all of the documentation for these elements, it is it is on this elements page over in the sidebar. Uh, you can open up, there's all the core elements inside of here and you can read through their documentation. Uh, there's also all of the paper elements inside of here, read through their docs as well, see demos, things like that. Lots of um, useful stuff here. So uh, continuing on with my project, it's gonna ask if I wanna use SAS for my element styles, I'll say yes. And then it's going to ask if I want to use libsass, which is the um, the uh, the Node version of SAS, or if I want to use just stick with the the Ruby version. Now the Node version is uh, it compiles faster. Um, libsass, I believe, is based on C, um, so it compiles a lot faster. But it's it's not as feature rich as the Ruby version. And it's maybe not as compatible with other libraries. Um, so by default, this is set to no, and I'm just going to hit enter to stick with that no default. And then it's going to go out and it's going to start installing all the dependencies to set up my project. Now, I'm going to pause the video so you don't have to watch all this install. And when I come back, we're going to work on setting up our first application. All right, so now that we've got all of our dependencies installed, we can actually switch over to our code editor and check out our project. So browsing around here in the sidebar, you'll see that it's a pretty typical structure, similar to many Yeoman projects. You've got an app directory. Uh, inside of there, you've got Bower components for, for all of the uh, elements that we just installed, uh, you know, images, scripts, styles. Outside of the app directory, you've got your sort of typical project files like JSNRC and editor config to make sure that the, the style and structure of your project is consistent. But what I want to do is look at the index file, which is inside of the app directory. And taking a look at this, it's pretty typical of um, many other Yeoman projects, but the interesting things to point out are one, we've gone ahead and we've just included the platform for you. So this project is, is ready to use web components from the get-go. And the other thing that's really important to note is this, uh, 
this import for a file which is called elements.html. And that lives in this elements directory over here. If we open elements.html, we'll see that it includes additional imports for custom elements, one called yo list, one called yo greeting. And those also live in this element directory. This is where we place all of the custom elements that we create for our project. Now, the nice thing about putting all of your imports into a separate file like this is it means that we can very easily include this little build directive, which is going to tell Vulcanizer, the, uh, the HTML import sort of concatenation minification tool that Polymer uses, it's going to tell Vulcanizer to take that elements HTML file, crunch it all down into a file called elements.vulcanize.html, and when we build a distribution, it's going to link to elements.vulcanize.html instead of just elements.html. So that way, as you're developing, you can you know, work with the unvulcanized source. And when you're ready to do a distribution, you just run grunt, and it's going to vulcanize everything and swap out this one line for you, which is quite handy. Now scrolling down the page a bit more, you'll see that we've, uh, we've got a pretty typical setup here. Um, you'll notice that we are using the, the custom elements that I was showing in the elements page. So we've got uh, yo greeting and yo list. The definition for those elements is located over here in the elements directory. So you'll see yo greeting with an HTML file for its uh, element definition and also a SAS file or an SCSS file for its styles. Similarly, yo list has uh, a HTML file for its definition and an SCSS file for its styles. So pretty nice little setup that we've got going on here. If you want to preview the application over in your terminal, you can just run grunt serve. And that's going to uh, open up a little connect server, and we can see our app running right here. Uh, just to demonstrate some of the features, you know, if we, uh, since Polymer has data binding, if we just start typing in this text field, you'll see that the data binding shows up with these elements. And if we want to maybe add another element to this page uh, over in Sublime Text, maybe I want to um, <clears throat> maybe I want to include like a, a core icon from the uh, the core the core element set. In elements.html, I'm going to start to write an import. I'm going to ask for dot dot slash Bower components core icons slash core icons dot html. And uh, using the plural form of core icons. Um, we're actually going to end up loading the core icon definition as well as the default icon set. So we get kind of two things at once when we use this little import here. And in my index page, I can then say, hey, I'd like to use a uh, core icon. And I'd like to set my icon equal to this Android icon. And then over in my browser, uh, because our server is using live reload, it has already refreshed the page for us. And now down here at the bottom, we have this little Android icon, which is pretty cool. Um, if you want to try looking at some of the tests for this application, again, down in the terminal, you can run grunt test. And that's actually going to open up a little uh, Mocha test runner and show us the very basic tests which are passing for the yo greeting and the yo list element that we created. If you're in Sublime Text, you'll notice that there is a test directory right here, <clears throat> which actually contains the test files and uh, some examples for how you can test a custom element, which is pretty helpful. This is something that people ask about a lot. How do we write unit tests for custom elements? And so um, we're starting to come up with some good solutions for that and, and add them to this generator. Now, one last really neat feature that I want to show off, which I think is, is pretty hot, is uh, the, the element subgenerator. So if I'm in my command line over here and I type yo polymer colon L for element and then give it an element name, something like um, you know, my element or xfoo or whatever, then it's going to actually scaffold out a brand new element for me. And it's going to ask me some questions. It's going to ask if I want to use um, if I want to generate an SCSS file for this, I'll say yes. And then it's going to ask if I'd like to include an import for this element in my elements HTML file. Uh, by default, this is set to no, because you know you may be importing this element inside of another one. In this case, I, I would like it to do that, so I'm just going to go ahead and say yes. And that's going to go ahead and scaffold out a brand new element for me in my elements directory. So I've got uh, my element here with its HTML definition, which right now doesn't really say much, but I'll, I'll just add an h1 to it that says hello from my element. 
And in its SAS file, I can say that I want to color it red. And then in my, uh, since it already added it to my elements HTML file, you'll see here's the, here's the link tag for it. In my index file, I can just say that I want to use my element. Save it. Go right in my terminal, run grunt serve. And when that fires up, I should see that icon from before and then hello from my element. So really quick, really efficient workflow that lets you crank out little Polymer projects, uh, you know, prototypes, full-blown apps, whatever you want to build. Uh, I really think this generator is super useful for that. Um, there's a bunch more that we're actually not covering. Uh, I want to do some follow-up videos and talk about, you know, generating uh, reusable elements that you can post to Bower and also explore some of the unit testing as well. But for now, this is a, a good start. Hopefully it gets you up and running. And uh, be sure to, you know, if you have issues or whatever, file them on GitHub, uh, leave comments on YouTube, and, uh, you know, enjoy hacking on the, uh, the generator. Thank you guys so much.